Okay, let's continue our exploration of graphing these sine and cosine graphs. And we're going to include now a vertical translation, for example. This here up 3 on this example. Okay, so our general form is here. G of x equals a times the sine of b x minus h plus k. Let me just quickly go through these. That's vertical stretch or shrink. Horizontal stretch or shrink by a factor of 1 over b. Okay, remember the reciprocal is actually what goes there. Okay, and then that's going to be our horizontal translation. In other words, our shift left or right. And then there's our vertical translation up or down. Okay, so for example, on something like this, it's shifted three up. Well, if it has a vertical translation, we want to account for this first. Well, how do we do that? Well, before we talked about how essentially our x-axis was the midline, right? Sorry, let me undo that. Okay, so what we want to do, like I said, the x-axis was typically our midpoint of the graphs, right? Which we, me we measured the amplitude from the midpoint up to the highest or to the lowest point, right? To the min or the max. Well, if we've got a vertical shift up three, well, then we want to draw in this thing called a midline first. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and dot that in. It's going to be called a midline. And that's at y equal to 3. And that's called my midline. Okay, so anytime we see that we've got a vertical translation like we do in this case of the up three, we want to account for that information first. All right, let me go ahead and erase. And we accounted by it since it's plus three, that means a vertical shift up three. So we shifted this thing called the midline. Now the midline is usually on our x-axis if we don't have a vertical translation. Okay. Okay, so and I'm just going to go ahead and erase here. Okay, so once we've done that, we then want to, of course, identify other transformations. So we know that one was up 3. Well, that's our amplitude. Which, again, is the absolute value of A, which is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. And we're going to then construct our period also which is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. In this case, the absolute value of 4. So 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. Okay, it's my period. 
Okay, so remember, the length of our period is the time it takes to do one cycle. And so I want to plot that first. So let's go out to about here and call that pi halves. Well, what happens next? Well, then I took that period and I divided it in how many four, how many pieces? Well, four pieces. Well, dividing by four is the same as multiplying by a fourth. Four over one, invert and multiply, would be pi over eight. So that's the distance I'm gonna add to my starting point. And my starting point is at zero because we don't have any horizontal shift. So zero plus pi eights would be pi eights. So let me divide it in four equal parts, half, and then in half again, four equal parts. Okay, so I know from my first location here is pi eights. Well, once I have that first location, I'm gonna again add this distance, or time if you will, to pi eights again. So pi eights plus pi eights is uh, two pi eights, which is pi fours. Okay, so this location. Pi fours. Okay, and then remember, once I have pi fours, I'm gonna add again that pi eights to my pi fours. Well, I have to multiply this one by two over two. So that would essentially be pi eights plus two pi eights which would be three pi eights. So three pi eights. And then of course, if I added another pi eights to it, that would be four pi eights, which is again, pi halves, which we already have here. Okay, so <clears throat> Once we've divided our period into four sections, four equal sections, then whatever that length is, that pi eights there, then I want to then add that to pi eights and then add to pi eights to that again. And I keep adding that amount to find my locations. Okay, let me erase. Okay, so once I have those locations, and once I have those locations, that's when I want to then make a table and start evaluating. Okay, so maybe we do G of G of pi eights. Well, that'd be two sine of four times pi eights plus three. Well, four times pi eights would be the sine of pi halves. And what's the sign of pi halves? Well, I think, oh, a 90. 90 pi halves, that would be sine corresponds to y. y is 1 at that location. Times 2 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, so and here's my table. So pi 8 is 5. 
All right, let's do another one. Maybe we do g of pi fourths. Two sine of four times pi fourths plus three. Well, four times pi fourths here just makes that sine of pi and two out front, three. And then I think sine of pi. Oh, sine of pi corresponds to 180. So my y value there is zero. Zero times two is zero plus three equals three. Okay. And maybe I just want to start putting these in as I go. Okay, so pi eight, five. And if I had evaluated zero here, I should have come out with here, there, three. Pi fours, I'm at three. Okay, and so once we plotted all of our points, our locations, and we evaluated, we should have these values, and then we draw our graph. Okay, and I just graphed here one period's worth. Okay, so notice we've got an amplitude of 2. That's going to be from my midpoint to my edge there, the highest point. And that fits, because from our midline here at y equal to 3, it goes up as high as 5 at pi 8, and then down as low as 1 here at 3 pi 8. In other words, it deviates 2 from that midline. Okay, and then, of course, this transformation is a horizontal shrink of 1 fourth. And notice, instead of our period being, say, 2 pi, which would really be right out here if I drew it to scale, we shrunk it by a fourth, and it's down here to pi halves, which made my period pi halves. Okay, so remember, if we have a vertical translation, we want to account for that first by dotting in that midline. If it's, say, up 3, dot it in at y equal to 3. If it's down 4, then dot that in at y equal to negative 4. And then after that, we're going to identify our amplitude and our period. And then once we have our period, of course, we're going to divide it into four equal sections and find those locations, evaluate them, plot the points. And we're going to check to see that it obeys what we already think in terms of the transformations that we know. Okay, thank you.